Well, hello. You didn't caught COVID last week, unfortunately. So I'm making this video alone. She's doing really well, just has a sore throat. She's been pretty tired overall, but uh, she's hanging in there and it hasn't hit her too hard, luckily. Since I'm alone, I think it's a good idea to make a video on uh, what it's like to ride through downtown Seoul. We're starting on the Hangang here, the Han River. You can hear the super loud cicadas. We'll just uh, explore southern Seoul a little bit and I'll link uh, what this ride is on the map. Not actually a good ride, just so you know. This is what driving looks like in Seoul. Despite its amazing public transportation infrastructure, a large percentage of Koreans prefer to drive. But what about cycling? In this video, I'll cycle through just about every situation you'll encounter in Seoul, the good and the bad, and answer the big question, is Seoul a cyclist-friendly city? Let's find out. Okay, so now we're biking across Mapo Degyo. This connects Mapogu and Yoido, which is an island and the business district of Seoul. If you're crossing the Han River from north to south or vice versa, you're gonna have to take a bridge. Most of the bridges you can bike across just like this. This one's a lot wider than the average bridge, so one of the recommended ones. And then uh, Pampo Degyo, which is where we're gonna be going later. On Yoido, there's really good bike paths, kind of intermixed with the roads. So we're gonna kind of start out on these nice roads and it'll slowly change. It's 34 degrees right now, end of July, the absolute worst weather for riding. So this will be fun. So now we're on Yoido, the business district. And you can see there's a nice bike path kind of right on the side of the road. This is uh, one of the newer districts in Seoul. It's one of the most developed. So that's why there's this nice bike path. Um, it's not like this everywhere in Seoul and you'll see in just a little bit. But uh, this area is nice if you like big buildings or like shopping malls and stuff, but I'd recommend a lot of other areas in Seoul over Yoido for sure. Except for having chicken and beer at the Han River at the Yoinaru Park. That's probably the highlight of Yoido. The next area is Yongdungpo, which is one of Seoul's older industrial districts that's constantly being demolished to make way for newer apartment buildings and shopping malls. This is a situation where there's a massive road, but there's no bike lane. Korea's traffic safety gets better and better every year, but it's still way behind most of the developed world. So avoid roads like this to stay as safe as possible. If you want to find bike-friendly roads, luckily there is a feature built right into Kakao Maps. First turn on the bike layer, and you'll see three different colors. Red means cyclists only, blue means sidewalk shared between cyclists and pedestrians, and green means road shared between cars and cyclists. The road I chose is not meant for cycling at all, and this is what it looks like. You can see cars pass pretty close to you if they have the room to do so. And since this isn't a cycle lane, there's not much I can do here. But if it's one of the shared car and cyclist roads, then it's okay to cycle more in the middle of the lane, as you have the right of way to do so. Alright, the most dangerous part of the ride is done now. You have to focus a lot, and to be honest, riding on the street like that is not the best idea. But I do food deliveries and I'm kind of used to it, so I wouldn't really recommend it to be honest. Even if you're comfortable with it, it's not the best idea. Now we arrived at a Shindorim station, and this is one of the biggest subway stations in Seoul. You can transfer between line number one and two, which are some some of the biggest and we're right next to Torimton which is that river down there and I used to live around here and bike all the time here so even if it's not the Han River there are other bike paths in Seoul you just kind of got to search for them on uh, cacao maps So Dorimcheon extends from Shindorim to Seoul University. And the reason I really like biking here is there's a lot of shelter. So if you're riding in the summer, it's a lot cooler than uh, riding outside for sure. They've improved these paths since I used to live around here. So it's really nice and smooth. Gonna ride it until a little park called Porame Kongwon. 
and uh, we'll ride through the park and see what it's like. Okay, we've arrived at Boromé Park. It's a pretty good park to ride through. There's a bike path that goes through it. Yeah, just kind of a good spot to relax with the family on the weekend. I think there's like a soccer field, like a, a loop for walking. I think there's rock climbing as well. So there are a few activities you can do here in like basketball courts. Most public parks in Seoul allow cyclists and have paths just like this, but it's more for recreation rather than exercise because there will be too many people to get any momentum going, especially on the weekend. So as you can see, there's a bike lane that goes from Borome Park all the way to Seoul University Station. Even though it's a bike path, not everyone really treats it that way. And the funniest story I've had is I was riding on this exact path and there was a drunk guy sleeping in the middle of it. I didn't see him until the last minute, had to stop and kind of be careful, but not the most comfortable place to sleep, that's for sure. But to make it more interesting, I'm going to go through one of these back alleys and then go through Bongtun Market. When cycling in Seoul, you'll run into a lot of these alleyways that are barely wide enough to fit how many people and cars have to use them. However, they are perfectly fine for cycling, but just be careful at the intersections because some cars tend to fly through them without slowing down. A great thing about cycling in the alleyways is that sometimes you end up in a place like Bungtun Market, which I'm cycling through right now. You won't go very fast, but there's so much traditional culture and food packed into every little corner, and it makes for some really unique and interesting views when cycling through the city. Now we're arriving at Seoul University Station, which is actually not that close to Seoul University. I used to live here and it's a fun area with lots of restaurants and places to hang out for young people. But here we have a section between Seoul University Station and Sarang Station, one of the blue paths on the map for cyclists and pedestrians. And here, you get to see Seoul's cycling at its absolute worst. On the road, the right lane is for buses only, so that's probably why the sidewalk is open for cyclists. But this sidewalk is absolutely crammed with people, so grab some popcorn and enjoy, as I try to maintain sanity while making it to Sarang. Okay, you probably get it by now. The Greater Seoul area has over two-thirds the population of all of Canada, and it's almost 800 times smaller in size. That's a ridiculous comparison, but what I'm trying to say is Seoul has a lot of people in it, and if you're biking on the sidewalk with pedestrians, you're gonna have a bad time. Alright, that was uh, one of my least favorite places to bike in all of Seoul. Basically the far right lane is for buses only until 9pm. There's no bikers on it so didn't want to ride there and disrupt the bus flow. So it says the sidewalk is for bikes and pedestrians but just not enough room for both of them. So just got to be really careful. Yeah, we're at the top of the hill now between Naksongdae and Sadang. We'll just keep going, slowly head north. Sadang Station now. This is one of the main bus stops in Seoul. Connects line number four and two. This next section between Sadang Station and Tongjak Station is also a shared sidewalk for cyclists and pedestrians. But as you can see, there is a lot more space and less people, making the ride actually pretty nice. It's actually not really as simple as just avoiding shared sidewalks with pedestrians and cyclists, as every area is different, and you might miss out on some fun places to explore if you just avoided every shared sidewalk. It might look super hectic riding like this. A very good tip that I learned over the years is just be really decisive and just stare in the direction that you're going. 
you kind of have to play chicken with some people. If you just yield to everyone, then you're just gonna be waiting for so long. I think we got a closed road here. But, I'll check it out anyways. I ended up getting lost here and I'm really glad this made it into the video. Seoul has so many hidden nooks and crannies all over the place, and when you're driving, taking buses, or riding the subway, you never really get to see them. When you're on a bike, you're so free to explore every part of the city, and sometimes you end up in cool abandoned areas like this one that pop up out of nowhere and really reward you for exploring and veering off the path. I found my way back to the Han River and decided to cross Pampodegyo, which is a really cool double-decker bridge with a bike path on the lower part of it. I checked out the view of the Han River from the middle of the bridge, and then decided to head back home. We're golden now. It's easy all the way home, just got about 7 kilometers left. But it's this nice, smooth, flat path. And hopefully you can hear it, because these cicadas are crazy. And the question is, is Seoul a good city for cyclists? The answer is, it's amazing, but it depends. If you're riding on the Han River, or you're riding on one of the bike paths here, it's absolutely unreal. Because you're separate from the cars, you don't have to worry too much. It's the whole reason I can film like this and cycle at the same time. So that's amazing. If you're going between two places without cycle paths, not every road in Seoul is the same. Some of them are really old, some of them are really narrow, some of them are really busy, and some are really quiet. But a general guideline to find the best roads is to look on Kakao map, set it so you can see all the bike paths. Red is the best, green is second best, and blue, there's no answer. It's just hit or miss. So just go for it and uh, it just takes experience and time. You can just try cycling a new route, see how it is, and adjust every time. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for this video. I hope this was a little bit entertaining. Eugene gets out of quarantine at the end of this week, so next week we'll have another video together. So I'm looking forward to that. Hope everyone's staying healthy. And also just enjoy riding in Seoul if you're planning on doing it. It's a great city for it, so take care. Too hot, so just one of these shots today.